Hey folks, Alan Manick, the Hot Rod Hippie here. This week's video, we're getting back into the Electrical Do's and Don'ts series with how to choose the right wire for your car. So let's get to it. Okay, so this week's video is part of the Electrical Do's and Don'ts series, but I don't have a separate do and don't this week. Instead, it's going to be choose the right size wire. Run the right size wire for the load that you're trying to work with and don't run too small of a wire. That is your do and your don't this week. It's a little bit complex of a topic and I want to cover a few background scientific factors that go into this in simple terms. So I felt like having a don't to go with my do here might complicate things a little bit too much for this video. I'm going to try and keep it simple and easy to understand, so please bear with me. So let's go ahead and start off with a quick little explanation of a few key terms and ideas you need to understand to understand how to pick the proper size wire for the load that you're working with. First and foremost is voltage. Voltage is a measure of electrical potential. In slightly more complex terms, voltage is a quantitative expression of the difference in charge between two points in an electrical field. I had to get that out of the way because if I made this too simple, somebody would tell me that in the comments down below. If I make it too complex, somebody's gonna complain about that too. Next thing you need to understand is voltage drop. A voltage drop is the loss of voltage over a circuit. This can come in the form of a load, a light bulb, a fuel pump, they are using voltage, so they are dropping voltage. That's an obvious one. But wire can also be a voltage drop. You can also drop voltage in a wire. And the third thing you kind of need to understand here is amperage. It is current. It is the actual load, device, whatever is in that circuit, how much amperage it is using, or wattage, depending on what information you have. You can figure out amperage based off of wattage and voltage. We'll get to that a little later in the video. Now I've at least mentioned the terms we're going to be talking about here. Let's break this down into a concept that's a little simpler and easier to understand. I'm going to use a visual here because personally I find that that is really helpful. Okay, go ahead and visualize your battery as a water tower. You've got the water tower full of water. That water is your voltage. There's constant pressure on there, constant amount of water in there. That's your battery with your voltage. Now you have a pipe coming down off of that water tower. That is your wire. That is where the water will flow through. That is the path the voltage will flow through. The larger the diameter of that tube coming off of that water tower, the easier that water can flow. Obviously, if it's flowing through a straw, it's gonna take a lot more energy and it's gonna be a lot harder for it to flow through that tube than it will if it was the entire diameter of the water tower. That is important because that is the same concept as what's going on with your wire. Now, I mentioned the voltage drop before. A voltage drop happens in a wire. It happens in that pipe. Say with that pipe, ridges in the pipe, or the walls are a little corroded or something, it's got resistance friction on the inside of that pipe. That's slowing the water flowing through that pipe. So now the same concept applies to your wire. Well, why is that? Well, because your wire has resistance, so there's a voltage drop. That resistance is consuming voltage as the voltage is traveling through the wire. So that's important to know. That means that the longer your wire is, the greater the resistance of that wire. Say if every inch has one ohm of resistance, well that's not that much. But now dial it up to two foot. Well now you got 24 ohms of resistance in that two foot of wire. That's a problem. That's the same thing that's happening with any wire. The longer the wire is, the greater the resistance in that wire, the more voltage drop. Think about that water tower again. Take gravity out of the equation, of course, but if that water tower is 100 feet in the air versus 50 feet in the air, well, that tube is longer. That means it's gonna create more friction and it's gonna slow the water's travel down the pipe. So you would need to increase the diameter of the pipe so that the water could flow at the same rate 100 feet as it did at 50 feet. Same concept applies when you're wiring. If you need to supply a headlight with good, strong power, a 16 gauge wire is probably not a good choice because you need to go from the headlight switch to the driver's side headlight to the passenger side headlight, depending on how you have it wired. And that could be a decent distance. On a big enough car, that could be 10, 15 feet till it gets to that other light. You might well lose upwards of a volt, a volt and a half from your switch 
to your load device. That means if you're only getting say 11 or 10 and a half volts to a headlight, that's going to dim your light. Now, let's go back to thinking about the water tower. Say at the base of the water tower is a water wheel. So it needs a certain amount of water flow to turn. That is your amperage. So now your voltage has to supply enough amperage to that wheel to turn. As the water flows from the tank, down the pipe, to the wheel, it needs to have a big enough pipe to supply enough water to that wheel without resistance in that tube affecting it so that that wheel can turn. Same thing applies in your car. Okay, so now I've broken down this concept into some simpler terms. I, I mentioned a couple of the items, the important parts that are involved in this process, voltage, voltage drop. How do I actually pick the size wire I'm going to be working with? The number one way that I determine how big of a wire I'm gonna run on an item is to check how much power that item is gonna draw. I will refer to the manual, I will refer to the instructions of a device and see if it lists the amperage that they're expecting, the amperage they want it fused at, or the wattage that that item is gonna pull to determine my wire size that way. If they only provide me with wattage, you can determine amperage based off of wattage and voltage. So let's say with a headlight, maybe I've got a 55 watt low beam headlight. Divide that by the 12 volt power that I'm supplying to it, and now I've got an amperage draw of 4.56 amps. So now I've got two headlights, I'm gonna be pulling a little over nine amps on those two lights. Now that doesn't sound like a lot of power, but it's constant flow of power. It can be over a decent distance to get there. So personally, when it comes to a headlight circuit, I aim for a 12 gauge or a minimum of a 14 gauge wire on that circuit. Something like a fuel pump. Somebody like Aeromotive, if you check the instructions for their fuel pumps, they actually recommend you run a 10 gauge wire for their fuel pumps to provide it with good clean power. Especially fuel pumps are often at the back end of the vehicle. So that power has to go from up at the front, wherever the switching device is, the relay or something like that, all the way back to that fuel pump. It can be a long distance. So on a fuel pump, if I'm using something like a Walbro 255 or an OEM pump, I'll maybe go with 14 gauge, more than likely 12 gauge wire on that. But on something like a race pump, an Airmotive A1000 or a Holly Black pump, I'm gonna run heavier wire, a 10 gauge wire to those. Now something like a tail light or a turn signal. That's not a heavy wattage circuit. It's not pulling a lot of power and it's not under as constant of a load as say a headlight is or a fuel pump. That I will go with like a 16 gauge or a 14 gauge depending on the distance for that circuit. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a link down in the description to a chart that breaks down recommended wire sizes for different circuits in a car. Personally, I usually step up one wire size versus a lot of the ones on that chart. That's personal preference, but on that chart, those are kind of minimums you could get away with. Like on that chart, I think it says 14 gauge for headlights. I already said I use 12 gauge. Personally, I wanna provide better power to those headlights because I want bright headlights. Everybody does nowadays. A wire that I think is just far too small on that chart is an alternator wire. It lists a generator wire of a charging wire at 10 gauge. Something like a American Auto Wire kit comes with an eight gauge wire for your charging wire. Personally, I think even that is too small. I run more like six gauge at a minimum or four gauge or two gauge even depending on the size of the alternator. Something like the LS3 engine and the 58 Corvette I recently wired. Well, that car, the alternator is at the left side of the engine. The wire has to travel under the motor, down and around to the battery terminal on the starter so that it can get the power to the battery. And it's a 140 amp alternator. It's pushing a fair amount of power through an eight gauge wire. I don't care for that. I'd rather give it a much bigger pipe to work with so that it can easily flow that power and constantly charge nicely. Now, the last thing I'm gonna to touch on is battery cables. I could cover a bunch of different circuits and tell you every single wire size I use on a car, but like I said, it does vary depending on applications sometimes, and that exhaustive list won't necessarily translate to you. I'm hoping the information that I'm imparting to you will allow you to decide what size wire you need, or you can refer to one of the links down in the description I'm gonna give you so you can figure it out on your own but battery cables are important. Personally, I say run as big as you can fit. 
especially if you're doing a trunk mount battery setup, if you got that battery at the back of the car going all the way to the front to provide power to your fuse box, to your starter, you need a good heavy cable so you don't have any battery voltage drop getting to that starter. That's gonna cause your slow cranks, your hard starts. You don't want that. If you're running a trunk mount setup, double zero gauge is my opinion what you should run. At least zero gauge, definitely no smaller than that. Now something like the 58 Corvette I was saying I've been wiring on, the battery is a foot and a half away from the starter. It's very close, but I still ran a two gauge battery cable on that because I want to provide solid power to that starter. I don't want any bottlenecking of that power getting to that starter to cause that hard start to cause that slow crank. All right, folks, I hope I didn't oversimplify this or overcomplicate it so that you can pick the right size wire for your projects. Like I said, I can't give you a breakdown of every single item, every single wire size you're going to need, but feel free to ask and I'll try to help you or point you to the information you're going to need. Like this video if you found it informative. Let me know in the comments down below. What did you think? Did I overcomplicate things? Did I not go in depth enough? Do you want me to tell you exactly what size wire your radio needs? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this every week. Thanks for coming around, folks. In slightly more complex terms, voltage is the quantitative expression of a difference In slightly more complex terms, voltage is a quantitative difference